Hi folks, Dr. Rob Barrington here with some more nutrition advice. Um, I wanted to revisit um, vitamin D uh, in this video uh, and try and expand on some of the things that I've talked about previously. Um, vitamin D uh, is the hot topic uh, at the moment in scientific research. Uh, there's a lot of research coming, about, coming out about the importance of having optimal levels of vitamin D uh, in order to be able to uh, uh, correct uh, metabolic dysfunctions that are caused by um, what appears to be a, a population in the West that have, has become deficient in vitamin D uh, for various reasons. Um, Many people are turning to supplements, and I think the the um, the message is coming is getting out to the public that vitamin D is very important. Now there are obviously two ways to get enough vitamin D. You can get vitamin D from your diet, or you can get vitamin D by uh, exposing your skin uh, to UV light. Um, I've talked a lot about supplements. Um, I've talked a lot about vitamin D in the diet. I wanted to really talk today a little bit about how you can get enough vitamin D uh, by uh, uh, exposing yourself to UV light. Um, as you can probably tell by uh, the light coming through the curtain uh, in, in this video, the, the, this, the, UK, the United Kingdom is, uh, is bathed in sunshine this weekend. It's been a very, very nice weekend. Uh, and the sun is really hot enough, I would say, to be able to uh, cause the synthesis of vitamin D in your skin still. still. So if you've got the chance to go outside uh, and, and, and spend some time in the sun, it's a great opportunity to top your vitamin D up. Uh, because when we head into the winter, our vitamin D levels tend to drop. Now we need to maintain our vitamin D levels in our plasma, uh, our hydroxy uh, 2, 5 vitamin D levels, which is the um, accepted uh, biomarker of vitamin D status. We need to maintain 2,5-hydroxy vitamin D levels of the plasma uh, above or close to uh, 40 nanograms per mil, which is equivalent to uh, 100 nanomolars per litre, uh, whether you're, uh, depending on which side of the, of the Atlantic that you live on. Um, now, most people in the West, uh, studies have shown that most people don't manage to get their vitamin D to that level, and this is causing uh, lots of health problems, uh, most notably insulin resistance, obesity, cardiovascular disease, uh, and possibly even cancer. So it's very important to maintain your vitamin D levels throughout um, the, the winter. And the problem we have is that vitamin D is not really ready, readily available in our food. And obviously during the winter uh, in northern latitudes uh, and southern latitudes, obviously at different types of the year, uh, the sun isn't strong enough uh, to be able to cause the synthesis of um, uh, vitamin D. So we're coming up to the winter now in the northern uh, hemisphere uh, and many people's vitamin D levels will drop. Uh, the first thing to say is that if you've got very good levels of vitamin D uh, before the winter starts, you're more likely to maintain those levels throughout the winter. Those people with deficiencies at the start of the winter are only going to get uh, further into the quagmire of uh, being vitamin D deficient. So it's very important as you come into the autumn to make sure that your levels are topped up. Now supplements are obviously um, one of the ways that you can do that. Uh, the other way is to uh, maintain exposure to UV light. Now, you can't do that naturally, uh, particularly in the United Kingdom and areas of the same, same kind of latitude. Uh, what you need to do is perhaps uh, look at sunbeds. Now, I'm not an, a, a, an advocate of going on sunbeds uh, for tanning reasons, um, you know, but there is a difference between use and abuse. Um, and studies have looked at people who use sunbeds in terms of their vitamin D status. Um, and it's quite interesting that uh, studies have looked at, um, for example, those people who regularly use sunbeds throughout the winter uh, and those who do not. And there was uh, about 8% of the uh, subjects who used the sunbeds were deficient in vitamin D compared to 42% of those who didn't use the sunbeds. So based on that study, which I will, I will put the link to that study uh, in the comments box below this video, Based on that study, those people uh, who use sunbeds regularly have a better uh, uh, vitamin D status compared to those people who don't. And I think the important thing to highlight here is that there's, uh, you know, there is a difference between using a sunbed and abusing a sunbed. If you spend a lot of time in the sun and if you spend, spend a lot of time uh, in on a sunbed, you're, you may burn. And it's actually the burning that is, is damaging to the health causes a lot of uh, free radicals, uh, causes oxidative stress, uh, and this can damage uh, DNA uh, in the cells and that can initiate uh, cancers. Uh, and that's really the dangers of UV light. 
But if you go out in the sun and you don't burn, uh, the sun is actually very good for you, uh, primarily because it, it causes vitamin D synthesis. Uh, the, key, the key point here is to make sure that if you do use artificial UV light to boost your vitamin D levels, uh, that you don't burn your skin. Uh, if you feel you're burning, you need to get out of the sunbed uh, as soon as you can. Uh, there's a lot of information on sunbeds and there's also a lot of disinformation on sunbeds. Uh, it's really just a device to pr produce a particular wavelength of UV light uh, that causes tanning uh, in your skin. Uh, and in that respect I don't see really any difference between uh, natural UV light uh, and uh, artificial UV light. The wavelengths are slightly different, they have slightly different effects, but there is overlap there. But we're not really interested in tanning, we're interested in vitamin D production. And you don't have to spend long in the sun uh, or uh, on a sunbed in order to be able to maximise your vitamin D plasma levels. Uh, going out in the sun, uh, even at this time of year for 10-20 minutes, is going to uh, significantly boost your vitamin D levels. Uh, so you only really need a couple of minutes on a sunbed in order to be able to increase those levels. Um, Supplements are obviously safer, um, uh, although you know you can overdo supplements. Studies have looked at taking uh, 2,000, 3,000, even 5,000 IU of vitamin D all throughout the winter, uh, and they don't really show any toxic effects that I've I've found in any of the papers that I've looked at. The toxicity, as long as you are only taking them over the winter, um, appears to be uh, actually very minimal. And so supplements are, are very safe, uh, and I would suggest that perhaps some beds are quite safe as well, as long as they're not abused. And, and these are two ways really to be able to maintain your vitamin D. Um, you have to understand that if you don't maintain your vitamin D levels, you expose yourself uh, to a, an increased risk of many diseases. Um, and so there, there is a lot of uh, misinformation there about uh, uh, sunbeds, and I think sunbeds can be quite, actually quite useful. Uh, obviously, if you go on holiday at any point, that will top up your vitamin D levels as well. Um, it's been shown that um, studies have looked at people who obviously go away on holiday, and they, they do increase their vitamin D levels as well. So it's worth having a look at this this study that I'm going to uh, put the link to in the in the comments box below this. Um, having a, a look at the uh, the scientific research around uh, sunbeds, there is a, there is quite a, a there is a number of studies that have been done in terms of sunbed exposure and vitamin D levels. Um, I would suggest it's it's one option to look at. I personally would take supplements as a as a first option. Um, but if you go on some beds, if you if that's something that you that you want to do, it it is worthwhile considering that. And we have to have to understand as well that if we manage to maintain our vitamin D levels throughout the winter, we reduce greatly uh, our uh, exposure to um, our, our risk of getting uh, uh, colds, uh, influenza, other other. Um, upper respiratory tract infections because vitamin D is pivotal to the function of the immune system. Um, so if you find that you have uh, frequent colds, uh, you've, you have a lot of infections throughout the winter, it may well be worth looking at your vitamin D intake uh, and, and two, way, two of the best ways you can do that are through either taking supplements or exposing yourself to UV light in some way. So I hope that was interesting. Uh, really just a, a quick reminder that we need to maintain our vitamin D levels. It's getting towards winter. It's getting towards that point where everybody vitamin D levels at higher latitudes are going to start to drop if you're in the northern hemisphere um, and therefore uh, those people in uh, North America those people in Western Europe um, the, the, the countries that we typically refer in the northern hemisphere to the west those people are now going to be coming uh, into uh, a, a, a higher risk of developing vitamin D deficiencies and higher risk of developing uh, particular types of diseases. So it's uh, very worthwhile having a look uh, and, and assessing whether you think that you need to, to boost your levels of vitamin D over the coming months. So I hope this was helpful. Um, as always, if you have any comments on this video, if you want to leave some comments below, I'll try and get back to you uh, as soon as possible. I have done other videos on vitamin D as well, so I would suggest that perhaps you have a look at those. Uh, and also, if you want to check out my blog, there's lots and lots of information information on vitamin D there that's uh, www.robertbarrington.net um, and uh, also there are, there's, there's lots of very useful information on vitamin D on the internet um, there are various sites that are specialized that specialize in uh, information on vitamin D so so there's lots of information uh, if you can find the time to, to read some of that information that would I think greatly improve your health uh, and hopefully I'll see you again uh, soon for another video take care